Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In this tutorial, we're going to create an illustration for an onboarding screen. And so hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you guys will have what you need to create some awesome 3D illustrations for all of your design related projects. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start this tutorial in Adobe XD. And in here, I have an iPhone 11 artboard, 414 wide by 896 high. And then the second thing we're going to be doing is our illustration in Dimension. So this is Adobe Dimension. And we're going to worry with setting up the artboard and everything in here in a bit. But for now, let's go ahead and switch back to Adobe XD. Those are the two programs you're going to need. So now that we are in Adobe XD and we have our artboard here ready to go, we need to start with our planning, our wireframe. And before we do that, speaking of planning, Today's video is sponsored by Milanote. Milanote is a bit different than traditional software. It's more like working on a wall in a creative studio. It allows you to map out your projects, gather and organize all of your inspiration in one convenient place, and it allows you to collaborate with your colleagues or clients in real time. As a full stack designer, it's an essential part of my workflow, and this awesome tool is free, so check out the link at the top of the description. The first thing I want to do here is set up some basic guidelines so that our app has some nice room around the edges. So I'm going to drag out a guideline here from the left and we're going to put this at 35 points from the left hand side of the artboard and 35 from the right side so that we have our edge guides here. And then we're going to do one from the top. And by playing around with having the status bar up here and testing this prototype out on my phone, I'm going to go with around 64 and nothing is going to be above that. That way we have some decent room up here for our status bar and everything else, the notch in the phone. So below that here in the corner, we're gonna have a skip button. So let's go ahead and add that. Make sure the user can easily skip through this onboarding process if they choose. And for the font today, we're gonna be using the SF Pro display. This comes with the Apple iOS kit. So I'm just going to use that at 14 size and we're gonna put that to medium since it is gonna be a secondary button. And we'll just drag that up into the corner and align the text to the right. Next thing we'll need is a title text. So I'm just gonna duplicate that, holding Alt and dragging it out. And for this one, we're going to set this to a decent size since this is gonna be the whole point of the page telling us what the illustration is and what the user needs to know. So we're gonna set that to about 45 points and then we're going to make that a bold and make sure that's aligned to the left. So I just pasted in some text there and we're gonna need two lines of text. So I'm gonna convert this to a text area by selecting this icon and we're gonna drag this over to meet this guideline. And then we'll double click this red point right here and that allows it to snap to the bottom so that we have a good size text area to fill the content. I'm okay with this 54 line height for now. So we're going to leave that. And for now, that is good. We're just gonna drag that up to around 74 points below the skip button there. We're gonna need one final button down here at the bottom for the next button. So we'll hold Alt and drag out the skip text there. We're going to center align this and change this to next. And since this is our primary button text, we're gonna bump that up to 16 points instead of 14. Around that, we're gonna have a rectangle. So I'm just gonna drag one out and send it to the back with Command Shift, left square bracket key. And then we'll center that so that that text is centered inside of that. The width is gonna be 344 points because it's from edge to edge here of our guides. And for the height, I'm just gonna scale this down to about 52 for now. Selecting both of those and we'll use our center alignment to make sure they're perfectly centered. And we'll just bump that up to 60 points from the bottom of the artboard. Gonna select that rectangle now and add some border radius. We'll go with six, just to give it a nice round. And for now, we're gonna remove the border and we'll just change this to a lighter gray so we can see it. The final thing we need here is the paging, the little dots here in the corner. So I'm gonna zoom in up here to the top left. So we're gonna have two states with this. We're gonna have the inactive and active. So the inactive, we'll set that to eight by eight and then we'll remove that. And for now, we'll just set that to any gray color. Put it here in the corner, hold Alt create a duplicate and this one we're going to scale this one up and we'll go to 12 and then we'll drag out a duplicate of the first one and we got eight spacing in between each of those that'll work fine and then we're going to center align them together just like that and the one that we're on is going to be the middle page here and I'm going to set that to black so I have the current page as the second dot for now I like to see what this looks like when we're not on the first page 
gives us a good idea of what it's gonna look like. So that'll do good for now. I'm actually gonna lighten that up just a bit. So it's not standing out too bad. And with that, we have a decent wireframe. From here, I'm going to select the artboard and I'm actually going to export this as an image with Command E. So I'm just gonna name that and save it as a PNG in my folder here, so export. And with that, now we can head over to Adobe Dimension. Here in Adobe Dimension, I'm gonna select the canvas here and we're gonna set this to 1920 by 1080. Just so we have a good, decent, high resolution image. I'm also gonna set it to 300. That's completely optional if you wanna keep that at a good web size of 72. And then I'm going to hit Z and then I'm just going to drag into the left corner up this way, clicking here and dragging. We'll scale this down and go in the opposite way, we'll scale it up. And then I'm just gonna hold space bar to move this into frame. So here in Adobe Dimension, I'm gonna choose my first asset here from the models. I'm just gonna scroll down until I find one that I like. I kinda wanna do something with products. I was originally gonna use a robot from Adobe Stomp, but for the purpose of this tutorial and you guys being able to follow along, I'm gonna modify that design into a product one. So here we have this squeeze tube. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna click on that. And then with the X, I'm gonna hold shift so that snaps and rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm also going to grab a box that is hollow, so a hollow cube, click on that. And then one on my keyboard for the rotation tool. And then V for the default selection tool where you can do pretty much everything from here. You can rotate, scale, and drag it around. So I'm just gonna drag this, try to get this into the center of this box. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on this square for the scale of the X. That way it scales in on all sides there. So I'm gonna rotate to the side now and I'm gonna select the cube. And then on the Y scale, I'm just going to drag that down. So it's around there. Selecting the tube, I'm just gonna drag that up. And I'm gonna go up to view, enable snap to ground. I'm gonna make sure this snaps to the ground. So that should be, if I drag it over here for you, just sitting nice on the ground plane. So I'm just trying to get this box to fit around that product as best I can. That looks pretty good. Selecting the cube one more time, I'm just gonna scale that Y down just a little bit further. The whole point here is to see the product. There we go. From here, we just need some details in the surrounding environment. So I'm just going to grab a default cube and I'm going to select it and just hold shift and drag it down to scale it down. We'll drag it out. And then if I scale it down, it's gonna to snap to the halfway there. So I'm gonna turn off enable snap to ground so that I can freely put this into the ground as much as I like. I'm just gonna sink that into the ground there a little bit. And I'm using the grid here on the floor to try to get this perfectly aligned. Command C, Command V to create a duplicate. I'm gonna drag another one out. This time I'm gonna put it up a little higher. Command C, Command V again. And this time I'm gonna scale it down holding shift to scale in all directions. So it's really tiny and we'll just bring it back up. So from here, I'm just gonna rinse and repeat, copying these cubes and pasting them in. And then I'm gonna paste in another hollowed cube and put that on top of one of the cubes and just adding some detail to the surrounding environment here. All right, so now that we have a bunch of assets here, next I'm going to focus on trying to get this into a good view of the camera. So I'm gonna select our canvas here and actually change this to the exact dimensions of our artboard. So 414 by 896. And another thing I like to do here is select the environment and on the background, just select that swatch, convert that to an image, and then just drag in our image of our wireframe. This gives us a good idea of what this illustration is gonna look like in our app before we actually put it in Adobe XD. So now I'm just going to find a good angle for this. So I'm gonna hit two on my keyboard to give me the, I think this is called the pan tool? Move tool. So for the move tool, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. One for the rotate tool. All right, so I think that's where I want this to sit. Obviously we're gonna have to change the text from the we automate your emails. 
um, because I had the robot here originally, but that is a Adobe stock asset. Uh, so we're gonna change this to a different text in a minute, but we get a good idea of what this is gonna look like. So I'm gonna select the environment and here in the background, we're actually gonna go back to a color and I have two color themes here. We're gonna try this orangish peach color first. So I'm gonna paste that in for the background color. Color code on that is FF7566. There we go. And what I like to do first is select everything here. I'm missing a cube, so I'm actually just gonna delete that one since it's off camera. So I'm just gonna drag and select everything. And we have absolutely everything but the camera and the environment selected, which is good. I'm gonna select this circle, which is the materials. And up at the top, I'm going to set this to matte. And then if you go to any one of these over here in the scene, you can see this arrow. I'm going to select that. And that will take us to the color. And you can see this link so that all of these are linked together. So if I change the base color to that same color, it changes everything, which is what we want. So from here, I like to add some color. So I'm going to select the primary object, which is this tube. So it's a product. Uh, and I'm going to go to the body and the lid. So first let's change the body. We'll try a black. So I'm gonna hit that arrow here. I'm gonna select this link to break it so that it won't update everything else. And we'll just paste in a color code. And this one is a decent black. It's 33302E. So that's like a nice mattish black. And then for the tube color, I'm actually gonna change the material to a gold. So we have the lid at clean gold and that at black. So in Adobe Dimension, here in the corner, you can test render this. This is a render preview. So if I click on that, it's gonna render it out and we get to see kind of what this is gonna look like. It's very rough, but we get a good idea with some shadow in there. So one thing I wanna do is I want to unselect that, go to the environment, and the shadow opacity, I like to drag that down to a 50% when I'm working with these matte materials. It looks a little better. So we'll render that out again, just to get a good idea. That's looking pretty good. So next, I wanna add some color to some of the rest of the objects in the scene. And since we have a background color that's nice and bright like this, I'm only gonna add some subtle colors, maybe black, white, gold, not adding too much in here. And I only like to do like four to five colors, sometimes even less. And so I'm just gonna play around with this. This takes a little bit of time, just testing the render, making sure it looks good to get exactly what I'm looking for here. Uh, if we want to go into more detail and add more products or other things in here, you can. This is a good starting point for an illustration. So I'm going to go with this for now. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to the render tab here and go ahead and render this out. So to render this, I'm going to go with the slowest, which is the highest resolution. I'm going to change this to a Photoshop 32. And I also like to render a PNG as well. We're going to be using the PNG, but I like to have that Photoshop document there just in case I need to remove the background. So that's what that's going to do. I'm going to choose my render path. Set that to my assets folder that we're using. And then we'll open that up, give that a name, and then we'll hit render. So heading back over to Adobe XD, now that our render is finished, I'm gonna grab a rectangle and I'm just going to fill out the artboard with that. So it should be the same dimensions as our artboard. And then Command Shift, left square bracket key, we'll send it all the way to the back and then we'll remove the border. I'm gonna select my PNG and drag that in so that we have our render here in the background. All right, so now that we have that in the background, let's go ahead and finish off the rest of our elements. First, I'm gonna change the text to choose your products. And since we have a colored background, we'll go with a white color. We'll do the same for the skip button. I'm gonna grab all three of those circles, change them to white. And then I'm gonna select the two that are in the inactive state. And I'm gonna drag the opacity down to about 35%, just so they're nice and light, but we can still see them. This gray rectangle here on our button can go to white. And then finally, our next button can go to black there. So with that, we have our nice illustration here in our artboard and we have our simple onboarding screen finished. And here are the other two examples I showed you guys originally. If you have Adobe Sock, there are 3D assets you can use such as this robot. But if you don't, you can use all the assets that are provided for you inside of Dimension and create something like this as well, which is just a more advanced version of this. Just takes a little bit more time, uh, but it's just as easy as creating this first one here. So that is gonna do it for today's Adobe XD and Dimension tutorial. Special thanks to Milanote for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to check out their product for planning your next creative project, check out the link at the top of the description. 
Hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. That's gonna do it for me. Make sure you guys subscribe for more design related content. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.